Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Abby, and I'm back with another one. We are going to be talking about everything nervous systems. We're going to be talking about desensitizing our nervous system. What is our nervous system? Why is there such a focus on desensitizing our nervous system and other frameworks that we can use as coping mechanisms? So let's get into Okay, so first and foremost, what is our nervous system? In order to understand how we desensitize it, we have to understand what it is in the first place. So the nervous system is a complex network system within our body that works to translate sensory signals, so that's things that we can physically touch, to and from the body and the brain, interchangeably, the brain to the body. So a great example that I think helps me understand the nervous system is, um, say, for example, we touch a hot stove, right? So we're touching the hot stove, our sensory signals, us feeling the heat of the stove sends a signal up our bodies to our brain that says hot, hot, hot. Our brain then sends a signal back down to our fingers saying danger, danger, danger remove and that's why we have that reflex right it's that's how quick our nervous system is like think about how fast our human reflexes are right that's how fast our nervous system is because it's information going from here all the way back up and back here within less than a second like milliseconds it's amazing how the human body works so essentially what our nervous system is is um the body's communication system it connects the physical body to the mind and the mind to the physical body Okay, so how does this relate to me, to you, to anyone looking to desensitize their nervous system as a coping mechanism? Well, let me tell you. As I mentioned in my previous video, which if you haven't watched, please do. I will maybe put a card or something. I basically talk about how I learn to control my anger through essentially desensitizing my nervous system so the first way to desensitize your nervous system and really this is the only way that i've really adapted um, is through breath and yes it's as easy and simple as that simply breathing um i know a lot of people use other techniques like cold baths or cold showers i have a friend that does cold showers routinely in the morning and he says that it does wonders and i think that's another way of desensitizing your nervous system okay so when we are experiencing anxiety stress overthinking our minds and our thoughts are being activated our mind is speeding through thought because our mind is oftentimes filled with worry anxiety grief sorrow etc any type of uncomfortable triggers, our body then follows, right? So our mind is experiencing these uncomfortable thoughts, triggers, right? And then our body reacts to those thoughts, right? Like the mind and the body are connected. Our body doesn't produce thoughts. How it reacts to these, these triggering or uncomfortable thoughts is it is through action, right? So what we see is we start breathing heavier, right? We're hyperventilating we're sweating sometimes we're sweating we have that really uncomfortable feeling in our stomach we feel like we want to throw up right sometimes we even feel like we're going to pass out and that is simply the mind triggering the body right these thoughts that we're having these feelings of anxiety that we're having are triggering our body to have a response body essentially doesn't feel safe and so it puts its defenses up it's like it would in the wild this is our nervous system being activated that is an activated nervous system right and we get active our nervous system is activated when we are experiencing anxiety so what happens when we consciously take deep breaths is we kind of hijack the body in a way right taking deep breath physically calms the symptoms of anxiety right and what happens is when we calm the body the mind also gets calm to a certain extent right um 
I think it's super important to recognize the mind, body, and soul connection. Um, and I know the Western healthcare doesn't really focus on this too much. And so we probably haven't heard of it very much. Um, but essentially, it's like it's more of like a holistic approach to health where we look at like the mind, the body, and the soul, right? We need mental health, physical health, and spiritual health to be in complete alignment and to be... Um, healed or fully fully healed right like we can't heal the body without healing the mind we can't heal the mind without healing the soul everything is interconnected so when we take time to consciously breathe we are taking control of our body and when we physically calm down our body when we soothe our body our mind then follows i think it's important to recognize that mental health physical health and spiritual health is insanely important for healing and for achieving real health um i think that sometimes we now are having a major focus on like mental health physical health we've all been aware of mental health is something that's coming in the forefront but i think that there is to be a focus also on spiritual health right and that doesn't necessarily have to be religion or anything like that but it's really having you know a connection to something that is greater than um and i think that within western societies we kind of lack that spiritual health we kind of lack that like soul health and i think that if we incorporate it into our lifestyles and we make it a standard of health we can actually reach healing on a different level and we can actually reach like total aligned healing okay so we've talked about how to calm our bodies and calm our minds through breath but what happens when we are triggered again when someone asks us an uncomfortable question or crosses a boundary that we had put up for ourselves or you see your peer doing big and luxurious things on instagram on social media the real question is what happens when we are triggered again because you will be triggered again is it a constant cycle of activated and deactivated than activated nervous system or is there true healing can we obtain true healing i think a lot of us are going through the motions of that question right we've all kind of been on like a healing journey and we've come so far we've healed so many traumas and triggers and like we've evolved right we're not the same person that we were three years ago we're not the same person that we were a year ago we've changed for the better and that's amazing that's great but I think sometimes we notice or what I've noticed is like, okay, we're kind of going through the same problems over and over just in a different facet or it just looks different. It's packaged different, but it's the same issues, right? Some people might say these are like karmic cycles. So here's what I think and here's what I have come to understand. Come to understand that I think we have all put a huge focus on what is within right? We're focused on our thoughts, deeming them bad, and subsequently beating ourselves up for having these bad thoughts or doing these bad things, right? Without realizing that we are human beings. And this is not an excuse to do whatever you want. It's not an excuse, but it's just an understanding that we are human beings. And being human means that there's going to be struggles. There's going to be challenges. It's kind of within our nature. But knowing that we will eventually get through it is really what allows us to heal. And I think that we can do that through the F word. And that F word is faith faith in God specifically. So, faith, faith, faith. <laughs> what does that mean and does it have to come with religion well faith is essentially having complete and total trust and confidence in a higher power in god you can have it within religion so the answer to that question is like do you have to have religion to have faith is perhaps like perhaps you do perhaps you don't i know for me my faith is in god and in jesus christ specifically um i say that i'm like a follower of christ because 
that's really where my faith is. My complete and total trust really is in Jesus Christ and in his teachings and his guidance and his word. Um, but that is not something that I just easily adopted. Like that's something that I really seek to understand um on a true level like i'm the type of person i think i'm like a rebel at heart i'm not just gonna do something because you said to do it like you need to break it down and make it make sense to me and so i kind of took that same approach when it came to religion right i'm not gonna just adopt whatever you're telling me like i want to understand it but always within myself i had this like okay but why and i had this like very questioning and curious heart and i think that's really like one of my gifts because it allowed me to ask questions so that i could understand on a deeper level and that's how i really came to have true faith in jesus christ and so perhaps it's in a religion perhaps you need to go out and you need to seek right you need to ask those questions and you need to you need to ask them with an open heart to really receive truth right so i encourage anyone to go on that journey and see what you find but anyways i want to close off this video sharing some scripture that has really restored my faith and really kept my faith alive and that verse is from john 16 verse 33 so i'm going to read it here for you guys i have said these things to you that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is something that really makes me reflect on society, on the world that we live in today. I think about all the things that are trendy, right? I think about even something as simple as like the Western diet or like the fashion trends and essentially why that kind of relates to this verse is it, is it says in the world you will have tribulations when i find myself blindly following trends things that don't even resonate with me i lose myself right i lose myself because it's not authentic to who i am right when i blindly do things without asking questions without understanding it, it, it never leads to peace. It never leads to a better version of myself. But when I take the moment or the time to be intentional with my life, right? When I choose to put Jesus Christ at my forefront and to live a life leading with love, that's when I find true peace and understanding. That's when I feel the most content. That's when I feel the most happy, the most joy, right? I think as a society or as a world at large, we look at we look at what the most popular opinions are, what the most popular trends are, and end up living in cycles of depression and anxiety because it's not based in it's not based in truth. It's not based in what really resonates with us in our heart, right? Because I think as a human race, what is really in our hearts is love and like as human beings every single human being i don't care where you're from our deepest desire is to love and to be loved and i think sometimes when we just blindly follow society and trends in the world we kind of lose sight of that and we kind of just go with what you know what is pleasurable what feels good in the moment but what feels good in the moment isn't always love or isn't always what's best for ourselves and when i say love i don't mean like romantic love i mean like like agape unconditional love like what is best for ourselves what is best for others what is best for the world as a collective right um so anyways that just helps me like really understand like in my words you will find peace in me you will find peace right within my boundaries within the boundaries of religion or within your faith you will find peace within the world there will be tribulations because what is the world guided by right like does the world have my best interest at heart like let's not get too deep into it but like anyways that's that's just what it is um yeah so i hope this video was useful to someone we kind of talked about all different things essentially what i want to ring in is that like 
we can desensitize our nervous system and we can calm our anxiety and we can get through depression but i think that we should also strive towards true healing and true healing is through the mind body and the soul and i think as a society we have really adopted physical health we're starting to adopt mental health but let's talk about spiritual health and i think when we start talking about spiritual health we can really heal and move in love and transcend all of our struggles or ailments or illnesses right to a certain extent i think we can start that through faith through having faith thank you guys for watching like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in another one bye